this one has, last time I checked, something of a presence on YouTube. Um, various people have taken it upon themselves to set it to music. I'm very happy. Um, I don't think they asked permission, but never mind. <laughs> nobody, nobody does on YouTube. Anyway, in Paris with you. Don't talk to me of love. I've had an earful, and I get tearful when I've downed a drink or two. I'm one of your talking wounded. I'm a hostage. I'm maroonded. But I'm in Paris with you. Yes, I'm angry at the way I've been bamboozled and resentful at the mess that I've been through. I admit I'm on the rebound and I don't care where are we bound. I'm in Paris with you. Do you mind if we do not go to the Louvre? If we stay sod off to sodding Notre Dame? If we skip the Champs-Élysées and remain here in this sleazy old hotel room, doing this and that to what and whom, learning who you are, learning what I am. Don't talk to me of love. Let's talk of Paris, the little bit of Paris in our view. There's that crack across the ceiling, and the hotel walls are peeling, and I'm in Paris with you. I'm in Paris with you. Don't talk to me of love. Let's talk of Paris. I'm in Paris with the slightest thing you do. I'm in Paris with your eyes, your mouth. I'm in Paris with all points south. Am I embarrassing you? I'm in Paris with you. <laughs> now, the next one I'm going to do is called, it's also a ballad, and it's called The Ballad of the Imam and the Shah, an old Persian legend. Actually, it derives from a passage in a book by V.S. Naipaul, which I'll explain later. Um, the dedication was to C.E.H., and that was um, Christopher Hitchens, my old friend, who died a short while ago. It started with a stabbing at a well, below the minarets of Isfahan. The widow took her son to see them kill the officer who'd murdered her old man. The child looked up and saw the hangman's work. The man who'd killed his father, swinging high. The mother said, my child, now be at peace. The wolf has had the fruits of all his crime. From felony to felony to crime, from robbery to robbery to loss, from calumny to calumny to spite, from rivalry to rivalry to zeal. All this was many centuries ago, the kind of thing that couldn't happen now, when Persia was the empire of the Shah, and many were the furrows on his brow. The peacock was the symbol of his throne, and many were its jewels and its eyes, and many were the prisons in the land, and many were the torturers and spies. From tyranny to tyranny to war, from dynasty to dynasty to hate, from villainy to villainy to death, from policy to policy to grave. The child grew up, a clever sort of chap, and he became a mullah like his dad, spent many years in exile and disgrace because he told the world the Shah was bad. Believe in God, he said, believe in me. Believe me when I tell you who I am. Now chop the arm of wickedness away. Hear what I say, I am the great Imam. From heresy to heresy to fire, from clerisy to clerisy to fear, from litany to litany to sword, from fallacy to fallacy to wrong. And so the Shah was forced to flee abroad. The Imam was the ruler in his place. He started killing everyone he could to make up for the years of his disgrace. And when there were no enemies at home, he sent his men to Babylon to fight. And when he'd lost an army in that way, he knew what God was telling him was right. From poverty to poverty to wrath, from agony to agony to doubt, from malady to malady to shame, from misery to misery to fight, he sent the little children out to war. They went out with his portrait in their hands, the deserts and the marshes filled with blood. The mothers heard the news in Isfahan. Now Babylon is buried under dirt. 
Persepolis is peeping through the sand. The child who saw his father's killer killed has slaughtered half the children in the land. From felony to robbery to calumny to rivalry to tyranny to dynasty to villainy to policy to heresy to clerisy to litany to fallacy to poverty to agony to malady to misery, the song is yours. Arrange it as you will. Remember where each word fits in the line and every combination will be true and every permutation will be fine. From policy to felony to fear, from litany to heresy to fire, from villainy to tyranny to war, from tyranny to dynasty to shame, from poverty to malady to grave, from malady to agony to spite, from agony to misery to hate, from misery to policy to fight. So that um, passage was, uh, that, that inspired this was in, in V.S. Naipaul's Among the Believers, and it describes the early years of the Ayatollah Khomeini, who did have that experience, that his, his mother took him and showed him the murderer of his father, and then said, but, said, but that's it. The wolf has had the fruit of his crime. That's it. The child clearly took a, a different lesson from the experience. Uh, okay, I'm going to read one last poem. Um, this is uh, poem that I wrote after I, uh, I'd been in Paris and had a, a, a drink at the De Mago and um, outside there were various old sort of um, um, ruffians in the street um, shouting at us in the, in, in the cafe. That night I I had a dream of this um, poem, and I had the rhythms, and I had some of the choruses, and so on. I had the illusion that I'd actually written this thing. It took some while to put it together again. It's called The Ballad of the Shrieking Man. A shrieking man stood in the square, and he harangued the smart cafe in which a bowlered codger sat, a twirling of a fine moustache, a drinking of a fine toquet. And it was Monday, and the town was working in a kind of peace, excepting where the shrieking man, a waving of his tattered limbs, glared at the codger's trouser crease, saying, Coffee's mad, and tea is mad, and so are gums and teeth and lips, the horror ships that ply the seas, the horror tongues that plough the teeth, the coat, the tie, the trouser clips, the purple sergeant with the bugger grips will string you up with all their art and laugh their socks off as you blow apart. The codger, seeming not to hear, winked at the waiter, paid the bill, and walked the main street out of town, beyond the school, beyond the works, where the shrieking man pursued him still. And there the town beneath them lay, and there the desperate river ran. The codger smiled a purple smile. A finger sliced his waistcoat ope as he rounded on the shrieking man, saying, Tramps are mad, and truth is mad, and so are trees and trunks and tracks. The horror maps have played us true. The horror moon that slits the clouds, the gun, the goon, the burlap sacks, the purple waistcoats of the natter jacks have done their bit, as you can see, to prize the madness from our sanity. On Wednesday, when the day was young, two shrieking men came into town and stopped before the smart cafe in which... Another codger sat, twirling his whiskers with a frown. And as they shrieked and slapped their knees, the codger's toes began to prance within the stitching of their caps, which opened like a set of jaws and forced him out to join the dance, saying, Arms are mad and legs are mad and all the spaces in between. 
the horror spleen that bursts its sack, the horror purple as it lunges through the lung, the bung, the jumping bean, the I think you know what you think I mean, are up in arms against the state, and all the body will disintegrate. On Saturday, the town was full as people strolled in seeming peace, until three shrieking men appeared and danced before the smart cafe and laughed and jeered and slapped their knees. And there, a hundred codgers sat, a hundred Adam's apples rose and rubbed against their collar studs until the music came in thuds and all the men were on their toes saying, Hearts are mad, and minds are mad, and bats are moons, and moons are bats. The horror cats that leap the tiles, the horror slates that catch the wind, the lice, the meat, the burning gats, the children butter buried in the butter vats, the steeple crashing through the bedroom roof, will be your answer if you need a proof. The codgers poured into the square, and soon their song was on all lips, and all did dance and slap their knees, until... A horseman came in view, the sergeant with the bugger grips. He drew his cutlass, held it high, and brought it down on hand and head, and ears were lopped, and limbs were chopped, and still the sergeant slashed and slew, until the codger crew lay dead, saying, God is mad, and I am mad, and I am God, and you are me, the horror peace that boils the sight, the horror god turning out the light, the Christ who killed the meddler tree, is planning much the same for you and me, and here's a taste of what's in store. Come back again if you should want some more. On Sunday, as they hosed the streets, I went as usual to pray and cooled my fingers at the stoop, and when the wafer touched my tongue, I thought about that fine toque. And so I crossed the empty square and met the waiter with a wink, a sweeping up of severed heads, a piling up of bowler hats. And he muttered as he poured my drink, saying, waiting's mad and stating's mad and understating's mad as hell. The undertakings we have made, the wonder breaking from the sky, the pin, the pen, the poisoned well, the purple sergeant with the nitrate smell have won their way, and while we wait, the horror ships have passed the straits. The vice, the vine, the strangler fig, the fault of thinking small and acting big, have primed the bomb and pulled the pin. And we're all together when the roof falls in. Thank you very much. Indeed.